This is it. We have one more year left with Kaisan to win the Champions League. Let's do this. So then guys, welcome back to the Red Devil Revival episode 116 of our Road to Glory here with Kai Slaus as I've just in the intro. It's our last ever season with the club. The 2029-2030 season is going to be our final one here in FM21. We've got the European Super Cup today and of course with it being the last year, that hashtag one more year. We are aiming for the Champions League. I've already played two games. I'll come back in the middle of August because it's when the Super Cup takes place. We've never had this opportunity, so I wanted to be showing it today. It's going to be our last proper transfer roundup as well in today's video. Now, before we get going in today's episode, if you missed last episode, which of course was the end of last season where we had the German Cup final and Europa League final. Of course, if it's being in the European Super Cup, you can probably guess how the Europa League final went, but... My main target was, of course, a German Cup final. If you did miss it, go back now before I inevitably spoil it. The link will be right above me. You can see exactly how we got on in both of those matches. And as well, guys, if you do enjoy today's video, make sure to check a like down onto it. If you do want to see any more of my content, such as the Red Del Revival, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and to ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. Now, no, you get straight into this video today. Of course, as I've already said, one match only being played. The rest will be focused very much on transfers. We'll go into the transfer history first of all. Now, there's been a lot of money spent and a lot of money brought in. With it being the final year, I decided we're going to have to go for this if we want to try and win the Champions League and also get back our Bundesliga title. So, a lot of new players have come in. Not that many of them are actually first teamers, other than one or two. Most of them are depth players to help give us more strength in depth when we are not having to play our first team. Now, in terms of players who've got out, I won't go through all of them because there's a lot of players, as you can see. I'll go through the main big names. First one being Mbom and Svanberg, two players we bought in a couple of seasons ago. Both kind of really dropped down the pecking order. Both of them have left for a combined fee of £40 million to Roma and Borussia at Mock and Gladbach. Next on the list was Deo Upamecano. I mentioned in the last episode for the Europa League final that Upamecano had kicked up a fuss and wanted to leave. Now, we got a couple of bids come in for him over the summer. None of them were what I was looking for. He still got three years left in his deal. They were all like £40 million, £35 million. We paid £50 million to him, so... He's gone out on loan. I decided, right, well, rather than having just sitting here and rotting and his value just dropping and getting more and more progressively pissed off, I've loaned him out to AC Milan. Hopefully he'll play. They have actually just won Serie A, so he has gone to a good side in this save. So Upamecano has gone out. A couple other young players have gone out on loan. We also sold Raul Costa, a youngster we bought a few seasons ago, never really made it. A few other youngsters have gone out as well, Zimmerman and Zielinski being key ones there. We also sold Leo Pop, a player we signed last season. He never really worked. We signed him for about 15 mil. We've sold him to Leeds for 18, made a small profit on him. Just didn't really click in the team. A few other players went out on free transfers. The youngster Mercado, our young Mexican striker, has gone out on loan to Roma for a season. And then three big transfers have occurred. One of them I was planning a long time ago. Jonathan Tarr has finally gone. We tried to sell him last year. He wouldn't go. We loaned him out. We've sold him this season to Roma for 10.5 mil. But Nico Williams and Joshua Xerxes have both left the club. Williams has gone to Chelsea for £55 million. I don't know how on earth this happened. They literally came in and they went slap dash, 55 mil, up front, non-negotiable. I was like, um, okay. He only had two years on his deal. He's not even a first teamer. So Nico has finally left. And then Xerxes has gone to lead to 40 mil. They did pretty much the same. They went initially at 30 mil. I said 50, they went 40, non-negotiable. I said, yes, please. We signed him on a free transfer 12 months ago. I will have to accept £40 million. I have no idea what these Premier League clubs are doing with their money. They are just completely wasting it on players that do not deserve it. So happy days. But that rounds up the sales and the players who have gone. And this right here is the players we brought in. A lot of players, these lot here, all joined on the first day of the window. I had agreed these deals a long time in advance. I'd done most of my business before we even got to the window. And a few of them I think I've already actually mentioned. Mason Mount joins us from Barcelona on a free transfer. 
He's a very, very good player. Despite being 30, he's still so good physically, so well-rounded. He's going to come in, play either the box-to-box -box or the advanced playmaker. Can even play the deeper DLP role. I think that's where he's going to play today. So Mason Mount comes in, great option for us. We signed this youngster, Simon Christensen, from Esbjerg over in Denmark. We signed him for 9K or 8K, as you can see there. He's very good. He's got five-star potential. We'll never see it in this save, but I may carry this on in my own time. So I'm happy to have brought him in. We then signed this player here, Joaquin, who is coming in to help out Bruno Fernandes. He is very much an advanced playmaker, an attack-type material player. He's already played one game. He looked brilliant with the passes he pulled off. So Joaquin is going to be a very good player for us. Signing for 18 mil. Very chuffed indeed. We also signed this youngster, Thomas Slav Clake. Again, another midfield option that gives us some more depth. You can see very much what we're going for with the fact that we have previously struggled when either Bruno and Fermek aren't in that midfield and we don't have any other options. So I've looked to get a lot more strength and depth this season. Clay comes in for 12.5 mil. Then this is the main player I have been after for a long time, about 12, 18 months in game since we changed to the 3-5-2 formation. Joel Pucci, Pucci. We tried to sign him in the January window. We had a deal agreed for 60 million pounds he would not agree a deal with me. However, I went back in for him in May for about 40 mil. I think it was 42.5 mil, less than what we originally agreed. And this time he accepted. He comes in. He is absolutely class, is Joe. He's only 21. He was like the player of the season in Serie A last year. And Blonia finished mid-table. He is very, very special. Indeed. It could rise to 53 mil, but... He's very decent indeed. We then also signed another striker option with Xerxy going out. And also I wanted to get another player in. Ahmed Todorov joins us for some reason from the Middle East. He was playing over in Saudi Arabia. He had a great year over there. Before that, he had some great time in Bulgaria. He had a release goals of 13 and a half mil. He comes in for it. He's looked very good in the cup game, which he played in. He's a very good option. Only 21, both footed as well. He gives us another bit of option in up front if either Souza or Chimpataz aren't available. So I'm happy that Ahmed has come in. Another sign we made, this time also on the first day of the transfer window, Nikolai Rovic. He comes in very much as a rotation option for our back three central defenders. He's 18 years old as this kid. He's very, very good. Signed from Brand over in Norway. Very good option. We signed for £5 million. I think it could rise to eight. Indeed, it could do. He is a very special talent indeed. Then, because of the fact Upa Meccano left the club, I knew we needed a first team central defender. I then went in for Pau Torres. I have been using Pau Torres very recently in a save I've been doing offline with Villarreal. He has been phenomenal in that save. I saw Torres was transfer listed by Barcelona. He's 32. He's so much in his prime. He's still very, very good physically. He's also a left-footed centre-back, which we do not have. So Torres comes in. He is going to replace Upa Meccano. He is very, very good. He's been very decent in the two games he's played already. So I'm looking forward to Torres being here. 21 million initially, could rise 23.5, but a very good player. We then signed three players that actually I had not initially decided to go for. Our director of football went for, and they're all really good players for once. The first being David Teletzea. I think I think he's Basque. And basically he comes in, just gives us some more depth on either flank. He's both footed, can play either side. He's very, very decent. He's only 24, a little bit of potential. Three-star current ability. Not bad for £12.75 million. Pounds. He then followed that up, the director, by signing another wide midfielder, Felix Correa von Verona. This time very much a right winger. He is very much the kind of option if Bowman's not available on that right side. He's very, very good. Very decent indeed. £11 million. Pounds. Not bad at all. And then the director of football then absolutely blew everything out of the park with this one. He picked up Leonard Jaeger, who is a regent from Manchester United, German as well. Absolutely phenomenal. I don't think Sadler has any option to buy in this loan deal, but he is so good. He can play left midfield or up front absolutely brilliantly, and I'm very much looking forward to him. We have so much more depth this season. And I really think we're in a good position. Of course, the window hasn't closed, but I think I'm pretty much done with all my business. We will come back kind of middle of September next episode. If there is any other players that have joined or left, I will, of course, let you know. But that right there is our transfer roundup. It's been very, very good indeed. You have to let me know your thoughts on the business and if you think we should go for any other positions as well. Now, though, with our schedule, we have played two games already this season. One was very disappointing, a 3-1 loss in the German Super Cup. We've never lost a Super Cup final in this save until this season. 
but Bayern just did us over here. There was a very good comment after the last episode about maybe creating another tactic alongside the 3-5-2 to help with slightly bigger and better teams. I now, after this Bayern result, have come up with one. It's a five at the back where we basically pull the wingers back to being wing backs. And I found I switched that at half time and it worked a lot better. We ended up getting back into the game, but we could, just couldn't get any other goals. So that is now an option going forward. Probably just whenever we play Bayern. We're going to sit with a free formation today. We then had a testimonial game against Real Madrid. Well, I'm not obviously going to mention that. But then we had an interesting cup game up against a very much non-league team. They're like fifth, sixth tier, Hildesheim or something, Hildesheim. And uh, yeah, we won 15 nil. I was a little bit harsh and played a very strong team after the Super Cup defeat. And yeah, it went a bit good. 15 nil. Our record before that was 15 nil, so we've equaled our record ever game. Unfortunately, we didn't beat it. We needed a 16, but we just couldn't quite get it. But it was a ridiculous game, so happy days for us. Of course, the German Super Cup we didn't win, but today's UEFA Super Cup instead. We've got Manchester United in it, who won the Champions League. We, of course, won the Europa League, and this is how we're lining up for it. Misic starts in there. I was going to play short, but we're going to go with Misic. Aral, Eriksen and Pau Torres on that left-hand side. Unfortunately, at the moment, John Lizio isn't fit, so Eriksen is having to start. It's in Kimmich as the DLP. Veerman on the right, Fermek and Fernandes in the centre of midfield. Jaeger is playing on the left today, mainly because of the fact that Pucci, he is fit, but Jaeger had a phenomenal game in the Cup, so I was like, we'll start Jaeger instead and then it's Souza and Chempitas up front. Jimenez has not been brilliant since the start of the season because he had a knock at the beginning. He is now fully fit but that's how lining up. Let's get into this game, hopefully get ourselves some more European silverware and start the season off on a high. So if we submit the team then, let's get into this. Let's hopefully beat Manchester United. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still man new manager at this point in the game. They've got some phenomenal players Pedri being one of the key ones. Gastina is a phenomenal striker. They've also still, of course, got Greenwood and players like that in the team who at this point are disgustingly good. But a pretty decent team talk from the lads there, or to the lads even, I should say. And there's our three at the back formation. I'm not sure how United are learning up. Probably a 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1, I would imagine. 4-2-3-1, indeed it is. Of course, as well, Bruno Fernandes playing for us today. No longer a Manchester United player. We're playing over in, I think, the Czech Republic. I think we're playing in Prague for this final. A bit of a random location. It's like a 20,000 seat stadium. But alas, doesn't matter. It's a neutral venue. Can we get the job done today? So far, opening 10 minutes, pretty poor from us. And United have a free kick in our half. Frankie de Jong on it. We nearly would have been not quite. Pedri back to de Jong, who looks like he's captain for United today. I'm pretty sure he's got the armband on right there. De Jong on it again. It's a decent ball. We do win it back. Come on, Fermek on it to Simao Souza, who scored five in the recent cup game. Oh, that was almost perfect. But Fernandes gets it back. Gets it back again. Come on, Bruno. Age 35 this season. Fermek, Chumpitaz. Veerman hits it. We take the lead in the UEFA Super Cup final. Come on. Brilliant start. If we win this, get off to a really good start, hopefully in the league as well. It could be a perfect start to the season. Of course, last year, we had a phenomenal end to the season. We won like every single game, well, nearly enough every game after the January winter break. But before that, we were very shaky, very inconsistent. If we can have a good start and a good middle and a good end this year, unlike every season where we always have a patch of inconsistency, this could be our year to really just win everything. I want us to win the Bundesliga. I want us to definitely be winning the Champions League. Of course, it's our last year. We have no more time left after this. Hang on, Souza. Chumpitaz. He gets off to goal-scoring ways on camera this season. Last year, he took a while to get going. This year, he's already got two goals to his name in his opening two or three matches. Some very good stuff. But as I said already, Champions League is our focus. We can win this. Fantastic stuff. I'm now into the German and I think the English Hall of Fame now in the game for various trophies won. So it's going well on that front. So that is very good indeed. We can get this and add to the points total. That'd be good stuff. How on, has It's a decent chance. Unai Simon, the severe goalkeeper in real life, I think. Decent save. Also, wasn't he the Spain goalkeeper at the Euros? I can't remember now if Simon was starting or not. But not bad from us. Very good stuff. 2-0. Could easily have been 3-0 from that chance. We win the ball back. Torres making... I think his first start for the club, or his second, I can't remember if he started in the German Super Cup final. But as I'm saying all of this, oh, 
Oh God, we do get, I was going to say, we might get that ball. We do in the end. It's three against two. Chumpitaz, we all know how quick he is. Chumpitaz, he's through. What a block. But Sousa's going to get there. It's another phenomenal block. Thermic, how have we not scored? Oh my goodness me. I can't believe it. I don't know how that hasn't gone in. I don't know how we're not 3 0 up right now. We are tearing United apart. They cannot deal with us on the counter attack. My oh my. Don't you dare go and score. Gassina, okay. Thankfully, he doesn't. We actually had a bid accepted for Gassina. He was originally a Chelsea player and they wanted to get him off the books. We had a bid accepted, but he wanted too much money and he wanted to be a star player. And I couldn't guarantee him that because obviously we've already got Souza and Chimpitaz, but I wanted to kind of have him as a play on the bench, but sadly he wouldn't go for that. So in the end, he went to Manchester United, but thankfully he doesn't score for United there. This game has been very action-packed. I'm quite pleased we've only played the one game already because I was this to be a very, very long episode. It'd be like last episode, over 20 odd minutes. But as I'm saying all this, United have Pedri on the ball currently. I don't know why he's number six. To Gassina, he scores, but I think, yeah, Lino's got his flag up over on the far side. Vi will no doubt be checking it. He did look offside. They are going to check. Is it going to get given? No, it's not. It's been disallowed. Good defending from us. We kept our line and our shape and caught Gassina offside. Very good indeed. I'm just going to go and praise the boys. It's been a very decent opening 30 minutes. Been very, very busy opening 30 minutes, that's for sure. Fermek doesn't win it there. Misic does do well, though. What is Misic going to do with the ball? He's keeping hold of it for a long time at the moment. He does eventually lump it up the pitch. Jaeger doesn't win the header, sadly. Now Rashford on this left side. United are back in it. It's 2-1. Rashford gets his second goal of the season. Not great defending from us there. I'm almost wondering if we should look to put some wing backs on. I do wonder if maybe we are inviting too much pressure down those flanks. Obviously, it's quite early. We've had a good start. But I'm wondering if we should maybe make that change. I think we'll wait to half time. Chimpitaz is through. It's another block. Who is that? Adarabio. Chimpitaz. What a save by Simon. How have we not scored more than the two goals? I really don't know. I don't know why the game is so laggy at the moment for me. It's very, very choppy. I don't know what it's doing. But what on earth is going on? We could have had like four, five, six goals in this match by now. Adarabio has been classed for United with some absolutely last-ditch tackles. I'm just going to go and say encourage to the boys. We have five minutes to get into half-time with the lead at 2-1. We're going to stoppage time. There's a bloody highlight. Literally the first minute of stoppage time. Two added on. Don't concede now. We're going to get a third, happy days, but don't concede. I do think whatever happens, well, unless we concede as well. Oh, Rashford's very shit, you know. Okay, thank you, Misic. Thank you. I was about to say, and if we concede, I won't be changing it up, but I do think we're going to put those wing backs on. I just think we're getting caught out too much down those flanks right now. Pau Torres, the Chimpitaz, a chance to break. Maybe it's 2v2. Chimpitaz, he, oh, he's poor. Very, very poor there from Fernando. Should have picked out a better ball. We get in at half time though, 2 1 up. A manic first half. Gonna say, don't let your performance levels drop. They all do agree. Right, we're gonna pull back the wingers, Jaeger and Vim, and we're gonna have to swap Kimmich over onto the right side because he's now our only right wing back. Jaeger off for Jamal Lewis. Okay, and Vim will come off for Mason Mount. There we go. A double change at half time. A change I think is the right decision. Just to help us out, we have a corner very early on. Fermix to Arau. How have we not scored again? I do not understand. Our XG must be so high right now. Kimmich to Pau Torres. Bruno currently back to Torres. I don't know if he's actually a proper highlight or if it is just going to fizzle out. But we'll see what does unfold. Fernandez to Mount. Okay, it's a decent flick on there from Chimbitaz. Jamal Lewis on this left flank now. It's an interesting pass. Okay, it does eventually find Mason Mount. We've gone all the way back. I can imagine the highlight is just going to end, but we will see. Hang on, great ball. Jamal Lewis, he's gone for a dink. He was never even going in, and Adarabio does clear it out. At the moment in time, United are very much still in this. Bruno's having a very poor match, and as I say, he's literally just got injured. So he's having an even poorer match, potential groin injury. Thankfully, we now have a player we can do a straight swap for with Joaquin. He's going to come straight into that position. 25 minutes to go. What is going to happen in this game? I really have no idea. So many yellow cards, so many chances, so many goals. It's a manic game. The second half has been a lot quieter in comparison. I think we're just going to go to positive. And I'm also going to tell Jamal Lewis to go more defensive on that left side. We're going to go slightly time-wasting and be more disciplined. 
Less than 10 minutes to play. There is a highlight, but I think this is because we're making the tactical changes. Joaquin is not getting there first. Please, boys, do not balls this up. Jamel Lewis, please be careful. You're on a yellow card. Don't be an idiot. Okay, Palestri at the moment. Graf, who I think is a regen right back. De Jong, Marcus Antonio, I want to say that is. Vindale, they've got so many good players. So many wonder kids from the beginning of the game is in this United team. It's quite disgusting, really. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit nervous. I don't know if this game goes to extra time or penalties. Pau Torres does well. We are really under pressure right now. Oh, for goodness sake, how have we not got that ball back? I'm hoping this highlight's just going to end. I think it will. Oh, he's keeping it on and he's shitting out. Palestri's ball in. Missage, good save. Thank you, Nicola. Very, very good save. We're going to go to balance. Full on time wasting. Stop passing in the space. Lower the tempo. I'm always going to tell Mason Mount and Kimmich to both go defensive and Souza to go more supportive as well. We are into stoppage time. Five minutes added on. We'll go cautious now for the final. There's a highlight. Corner. Fermek ball in. Oh, we don't win it, but Fermek has a second opportunity to swing this ball in. He does. It's awful. Straight into Unai Simon's hands, that. Oh, no. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Okay, Missage on the ball at the moment. Come on, Nicola. Okay, he doesn't give it away, at least. Got Manoral, Fermek, Mount, Chimpitaz. He does well. He does very well. Chimpitaz, all right, that's fine. It's fine. It kills off a couple of seconds, at least. Not bad. Into the final minute of stoppage time. We win another trophy and we start this season off as we mean to go on by winning a European competition. The UEFA Super Cup is in our hands. Missy just a captain today by the looks of it. No John Liuzio sadly to lift this one. But there we go. I've handed the trophy over to him. And we are UEFA Super Cup champions. Come on. It was a bloody difficult game. But if we can show that kind of fight and determination in the Champions League this season and knockout rounds later on as well, we could be on for a very, very good year. Post-match, get into the dressing room, outstretched arms. Congratulations, lads. They are all over the moon. Why would they not be very, very good stuff? Let's go, though, into our schedule. What are we come back for for next episode? At the moment, the Champions League draw has not been done, so we're not sure who it's going to be. We have some big games to start the Bundesliga season off. Bayern, Frankfurt and Leipzig. We are going to go through the entirety of August. We'll come back in the middle of September, either depending on how the Champions League draw goes, because I want to kind of speed this season up a little bit. We'll either come back for the Dortmund game in the Bundesliga or a Champions League game, depending on who we get in the group stage. If it's like a load of small sides, then... We won't worry about it, but it will be Dortmund for next episode or the Champions League group stage. We'll probably play two games as well. Overall, though, guys, that brings this video today to a close. Very decent start season. Yeah, we lost the German Super Cup to Bayern, but who cares? Glorified friendly. But we won the other glorified friendly against United in the UEFA Super Cup final. So that is very good news indeed. You guys have to let me know your thoughts on the transfers, all the business done so far, if you think you need any other positions to be strengthened, and so on. Of course, well, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure to chuck a like down onto it. If you do want to see any more of my content, such as the Rare Day Revival, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and to ring that notification bell to be notified when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. So, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.